Hey, Luis. This is Oishi calling from OSA. Is this still a good time to talk? Hey, Oishi. Yeah, this is a great time. Awesome. Um, so yeah, how's your day going? What's been happening? Uh, my day's great. Uh, so typically this is a time where you have like five minutes to get, uh, you know, your nerves settled before you get into the actual technical interview. Um, you know, they'll ask you questions like, how are you doing? How was your day? Just to like work the nerves a little bit and then before actually diving in. So since Oishi and I already know each other, um, we're just going to skip that part. Um, they will also potentially ask you to tell them a little bit about yourself. And so like Luis can talk about his background if he wants to. Um, but also since we know that we're skipping it. Okay, so this is gonna be a technical phone screen for the next 45 to 50 minutes. We're gonna be working through a practice problem that I'll give you on CoderPad and see if we can get a working solution with that time. Um, I'll give you the prompt, but then feel free to ask any clarifying questions and make sure you clearly state your reasoning so I can help you out if you get stuck anywhere. Okay. Um, so you have the CoderPad link. So let's get that pulled up. Okay, we will do. Yep, okay. Awesome, okay. So I'm going to end up posting a question in the coder pad. And it loads. I've already selected the, the language that I had and then I mean I could click run to try it try this out. Um, that's nice that you can actually run your code, but um, this is where you'll you'll be before the interview will post a question. So the question is up there. We can just walk through it really quickly. So you'll be given a 2D board and a word, and you are essentially trying to figure out if the word is present in the board. And so how you do so is you can construct a word starting from any letter and then moving sequentially to its adjacent cell, which is either horizontally right next to it or vertically right next to it. Um, we will ignore this for now, but yeah, here are some examples that you can see if this was what the board looked like. If you were given A, B, C, C, E, D, that would be returning true because you can see it go A, B, C, C, E, D, et cetera. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that's kind of, it kind of sounds like word search, um, except I guess it doesn't have to be an actual word. Um, okay, cool. So I'll just kind of start brainstorming here with a little bit of intuition. So it seems like, um, we have like a nested list, so a list of lists basically, which is a grid. Um, so we're going to want to traverse through that somehow. Um, I guess just like the way that I would um, go about tackling this, like just personally, I would like start in every single cell. So, so start at A and see if that first, first cell matches the first letter of the word that the candidate that I'm looking for. Um, for that case, it does. So it's not super interesting. But for, for example, for this case, I would have to iterate through, you know, A doesn't work, B doesn't work, on, on and on until I get to this S, right? Once I get to that first condition, that just sounds like a, a normal predicate, I want to like look around in those neighboring directions. So, so let's say this passes, right? Then I'll, then I'll look to the right, look up and look down um, and see that none of those work. So we can just throw away that. Um, that candidate, right, and continue searching on. Um, we'll continue up to here where we see that this is fulfilled, and then from there also look around and see if, you know, at that index that other letters is, is fulfilled. So that's kind of sounds to me like a, um, it, it sounds like a recursive thing that I can do. Uh, every cell just kind of do a search for each of the, uh, you know, keep track of which which letter. Uh, we're, we're trying to look for and um, 
kind of start a search from every letter to see if it works itself out. Um, so I think I can do this recursively and uh, I mean, I, I could do it iteratively as well, but um, recursively just makes a little bit more sense to me right now. Um, I'll go ahead and, and write some, some pseudo code here just to like organize my thoughts a little bit more. Um, so uh, basically I want to, um, or I'll, I'll, I'll write the, the, the skeleton first and then get into a little bit more pseudocode. So I'll call this um, search and um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm guessing a board, a word, right? Board and a word. And so what I wanna do is basically, let's see. So iterate through rows, um, iterate through columns here. And then after that, I want to check is um, the letter uh, like valid so far? Um, right, based on the word, like based on the word. And then I want to see, you know, if so, um, then I want to do like a search in all directions, basically. Um, search in all directions after that to see if uh, the entire word is valid, basically. Okay, yeah. Um, does that kind of make sense? Like, just like a high level thing that I'm, that I'm thinking of? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is great that Louis did because he's working through his logic and then he'll explain the assumptions he made or what his method will be. And the interviewer will like let him know if something is wrong or if he can go in a better direction. Um, but so far, everything he's done makes a ton of sense. And so cool. you should keep going. Okay, sounds great. So um, I'll go ahead and, and leave this here just so I, I, I keep a blueprint of where I'm going, but I'll, I'll start actually coding down here. So um, I want to do my iteration. So for, um, for row in, uh, I'm thinking of going through this in either by, uh, by either by index or by um, the actual item. Um, it doesn't really like make a difference, uh, so I'll just do this um, uh, for for row, or I guess this would be i um, for i in range. Uh, length board and uh, four j in the range of the length of um, my uh, so each column basically um, here I want to see you know is is in this case um, my board uh, you know the 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 cell that I'm at so board i of j um, if that matches, if that string matches the, or if that character matches the character, uh, the first character in my word, um, then that's a promising thing, right? That's that's basically the, the first thing we need to happen. And then after that, we need to search. Um, and I mentioned we're doing this recursively, but I think right now what I can do is um, abstract that a little bit to a, another function that will actually do the searching for me. So that way this would just look like, um, basically like just return um, like word finder of uh, dot 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 uh, which all which would be like a cleaner way of doing it and then all the the business logic would be down here um, so I'll I'll abstract that real quick um, and word finder is the actual one that does the searching that I mentioned so uh, does that does that make sense what I'm thinking yes yeah Absolutely. okay great so um, basically right now I'm just thinking of how to um, structure this helper function exactly what I need to pass down as the parameters so let's see I definitely need I think I would need the board to keep searching um, I would need the actual like position that I'm at just so that um, I know where I am in the board relative to um, each of my search positions and then I also definitely need to pass the word um, because I will need to keep I also need to keep track of what letter I'm at. So I'll call this like, um, I would call it letter, but it's, it's kind of not the best name because it's not the actual letter, it's the index of the letter. So I'll just call it index since that's the only um, 
like uh, that that's what that means basically index is the index of the letter uh, the index into word that is the letter that we're looking for um, yeah so that's kind of what I think I need for now um, yes okay so what I want to check first is, uh, or how I, how I aim to do this basically is, since I need to search in all directions, um, I'll be doing, you know, word finder, uh, th this would be in, uh, you know, like up, or sorry, this would be um, up. And then, um, for example, it would be word finder um, here left. And I, I know that it's, uh, Python's a, um, looking for this, but there we go. Uh, it would be like an, an or of any of these. If, if any of these work, if any of these uh, searches work, then um, that we found it basically. So um, that's why I'm oring all of them. So up left, right, and and um, and down. Uh, and that's basically the four directions that are adjacent. And so what I need to give in, uh, like the, the parameters I'd be calling are, you know, board. Um, for i, j and going up, I, it would be, um, i would be, you know, the same. Uh, j would be uh, j plus one uh, to go, or actually it, j plus one is the, the next column. It would be i plus one, sorry about that. Um, or i minus one, because that would be the above the, the the up direction basically yeah and j would be the same um my word would be my word and my index would be uh one essentially because uh the, that is the, the next word or the next letter that we're looking for since this check passed um here it, it would be the same uh this would be i and this would be j minus one for left word one this would be board i uh yeah i j plus one word and one and then this would be board um, i plus one because i plus one is down in the row uh, it would be j word and one okay yes so now i've covered the four directions and so now i just need to write the business logic that will continue this um, and, and immediately with like this grid problem i'm always like wary of um, out of bounds errors with with indexes uh, with indices so I want to check, there, could, there are two potential out of bounds, right? The, one of them is, so, so here I'm just gonna write out my thoughts so it's clear. Um, so out of bounds is what I'm checking. So uh, the, the two things I need to check are like board is out of bounds with my I's and my J's, and then also my index could be out of bounds with, with my word. Right, because um, I guess my terminating condition is when the index is equal to the length of the word, um, then I know that I found the entire thing and I can return like true, like found in that case. Um, but then again, like if I'm out of bounds in any way, then I'll just return false and that search will end, right? Since that's obviously not a correct candidate. Um, I think those two would be like my base cases essentially for this recursive like function. Um, and the recursive case would just be you know, continuing your search in all directions until a base case is met. And since I'm just returning that, um, an or of all of those, uh, like all of those logical statements, I think at the very end, we should get the answer we're like looking for. Um, does that make sense? What, I, what I'm like trying to sketch out here? Yeah, good job catching the out of bounds error before it ends up happening, but yes, okay. absolutely. Cool, so I'll, I'll, again, I'll leave this here just for, like a personal like blueprint um, so I can know what to follow. So first I'm gonna check the out of bounds because I think that's the biggest thing. Like right away we can see that like in this A case, like if I'm checking up and to the left, like that's always gonna be a problem. So I definitely wanna check that that's valid. So um, if I is, is um, if I is less than the length of the board, right? Which is um, the actual, you know, same, same, same as we're doing here, like the actual, um, above the our actual uh, grid then uh, that's a problem or you know if i is greater than um or equal to the length of the board since i starts at zero um, would you want it to be less than the length of the board wouldn't i always be less ideally less than the length of the board um not really because here for example i would be zero 
but uh, I'm giving it uh, minus one here. Okay. Right, so I'm, I'm searching in the, and what, what, what that translates to in the grid is here A is zero, uh, but I'm searching in all directions. So that would be at I of uh, minus one at J of minus one, right? So this, this would be when I is minus one, then, um, oh, I see what you're saying. So this, this, this would have to be zero, right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I should be less than zero and that's how that would work. Yeah. Um, same for, same for J. Like uh, if, if J is less than zero, um, then that's a problem. Or if, uh, if J is greater than or equal to the length of the board, um, in any of those cases, uh, that's a problem. So we're going to terminate that search. So just return false. Um, Another quick thing is J, are you checking J against the length of the oh, board? This should be, right, this should be um, length of board zero, which is the yes. actual column length, yeah. Um, this is also the second check. So if, if my index is out of bounds, uh, which shouldn't really happen, I should just do if my, if my um, index is equal to the length of, the length of my word, basically. Um, then, then I think that would be just return true. I'm going to make a note here that um, I can hopefully keep track of, uh, which is uh, I'm starting index at zero, but the length of my word would be, you know, start starting from one. So that might be a an indexing error, um, but I think that would figure uh, like work itself out because. Um, on the next check, it would work anyway. Um, so uh, I realize this might be, um, I'll make a comment here that's like, um, come back and um, ensure indexing. Uh, but I think I can move along with this uh, and, and really get to the, the core of the function. Uh, so I'll come back to that. Um, now I just wanna check, you know, if that happened, if, if, we're out of, if we're not out of bounds basically and we're not done, then we just need to do a search. So then um, we need to do if uh, board uh, board i j and uh, this is because uh, the the i's have already changed. So like like board ij here has already been mutated. So I don't need to, to do that in this function in, in this check, basically. I'm checking if um, the letter at that position is, is still promising. So if board ij is equal to um, word uh, index, basically. If so, then, you know, continue looking. Um, yeah, so this, this, uh, predicate here would go hand in hand with this one. Um, and, and I'll explain that in a little bit more, but I want to get to a, a, you know, something that I can run first. And then if I, if I need to um, circle back to it. So if that is still promising, then, you know, do much like above, uh, just do the same search. So um, do the search in, in four directions adjacent to that IJ. So that's kind of what that would mean. So return that. Oops, return, yep. And I'll do that. Um, it just looks kind of wonky, so I'll make it a little bit more readable. Yeah, so basically do that. And then uh, the only thing I would need to change is, um, is this index. So, um, just do this. Nice. And then uh, just update that here. And then I think um, that's like the recursive case all covered. So if it's still promising, if here, if, if, if the word is, is still, if the search is still promising, um, update the, the letter that we're looking for and search in all four directions from that second promising letter to, uh, to hopefully the end. Um, what I was saying beforehand about how uh, this might be um, 
off is that, um, yeah, I think, I think that'll work. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess for, for example, I'll just run through this with a very small example. It's S E E to make sure that it's, it's what I want. Um, so uh, for example, here, we already established that uh, this S is, is not promising. So um, we'll iterate through I, J here. The only uh, you know, letter that will satisfy this requirement is, is this S. Um, and so once that happens, um, we'll do a search in all four directions. So um, here, up, right, and down would actually work or would actually you know, not get caught by this case. But uh, the left case where J is, is negative one then uh, would be caught here and return false. So that would terminate. Um, and none of them would get past this case because um, A, F, and A here are not the word, that, the letter that we're looking for. Moving on to like the, the other one that, the other S on the board that we need, um, it would work the same way, except now, you know, the right would be caught by this case and not work. Um, and so we would, for example, take this candidate, B, so that would work here. Um, that would be caught by this check. My index would be would be updated, um, but then these would also, you know, fail out either by this check, or uh, th this is not true yet, but uh, or by you know nothing here. So um, I'm interesting. So in in the case here where I'm just going to return uh, return false. Afterward, um, I know that Python will, th this function will return none um, otherwise, but I don't know, I'm not entirely sure how that'll work out with this or. Um, I, I think Python will just say that none and false are logically similar, but I, I'm, I don't wanna make sure that you know false is here. So I'm gonna run this example uh, real quick and, and see where to go from there. If that, if that, does that make sense? Yes. Sweet. Okay, so let's do this. I think I'm gonna have to format this again, unless the spacing works out. Okay, sweet. Um, actually, yeah. Nice, and then here. Nice, and then here I'll just do, um, Search of fourth and word. Yep, okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, I guess I can't put an inline comment like that. Okay. I also don't know that I can do an, an, a multiple lined, uh, like, logical conditional yeah so it's not going to be the prettiest but um i'll have to do it all in one line oh, thank you wow yeah that's not the best but at least you you know what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think I need to fix this as well. Okay. False. Okay, sweet. So there, I'm going wrong somewhere. Um, let's see where that is. So I want to make sure here that I print out, um, or not here because we could have indexing errors. I want to print here. Um, or at least actually print here. Um, or I'll do this. Not board. It's it's board. I and J. Let's see where that is. A F A. Interesting. So my, I guess my recursive case is not really working um, since it's not, I guess, like calling itself. Um, 
Oh. I think it is. I think it's finding the first S and then only checking that and calling it a day. Right, because because of this return, I think. So so that return will return out of the function. Um, So I want to basically like not do that. <laughs> um, like it, it's it's calling it a day because the first one failed, and so th this this check is done. And when, once that fails, then it returns. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like that this yeah. return is yeah. basically the problem. Um, so I guess I I don't want to be doing that. Um, you want to check the entire like, board, right? But until but, it's true. Well, it it might also not be true, right? Um, sure. In that case, then I would just return whatever that that false would be. But I guess well, what I'm like still trying to wrap my head around is um, I do want to return early in the case that I found it. Right, and so that's why I originally thought this this return would be useful here, um, but it turns out it's not the best thing to do. Um, I think it might have something to do with this return, so um, I'll just delete that and, and see if that changes things. Um, since that was just something that I added uh, that I thought would help, but I, I also don't want to make sure it, you know it doesn't bring me down. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of. Interesting. Yeah, so the, the the none happened because now there's no like real base case here. Which is okay, so that, that makes sense to me. Um so back to this problem, right? I want to make sure that we keep we keep searching until that happens. So hmm. I don't want to be returning here. What I'm thinking of doing is just having like, I mean, it's not the most, it's, it's not the most, uh, you know, memory efficient way to do it. Um, but what I'm thinking of doing is just assigning it to a, ver a value that will be changed. And the last, the last instance of that value will actually, that's not great either. Yeah, yeah, because either so, way, that'll be that'll be uh, overwritten, right? Um, so you you need to check somewhere if it is true or not. Because if it's true, you can return it. Otherwise, you would keep going. Yeah, I guess I'll just do this. And um, I guess I can just do do this as well. Uh, maybe like compound these two in a, in, in a little bit, but right now I just want to make sure it, it function it, it works. So um, if that's true, then uh, then return true basically. And if we get through it, and that's never true, return false, right? Um, yeah. So this false would have to be outside uh, and still within that function. I'm going to add some space here just so it's clear. Yeah. Yeah, so now it's traversing the entire thing. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, so. I'll run it with this other example just to make sure that um, that works as well. A, B, C, C, E, D. And I'll get rid of these, or I'll comment this print. Uh, oh, that was a function. Sorry, I was I meant to, to comment this out. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So those two, I think, awesome. worked. Okay. Um, so it passes those test cases. And that means we can make this a little bit harder if you're up for it. Okay. So let's add one other thing. So now let's necessitate that the same letter cell may not be used more than once. So I'm going to add that up here. That's me. Okay. So if it was in this case S E E, it would not be able to do S E and then use the C again. It would have to do S E E. 
Um, and for that to be, let's add another test case to make sure that can. So does this change how you do anything? Okay, so A, B, C, B. Um, so, oh, I see. Okay, so, so for this example, like A, B, C, and then B back here. So I can't like use the same thing. Okay, um, I wanna try that and see. see. I think I'm, I'm sure that I'll break uh, the way that I'm doing it, but I'll, I wanna make sure that that returns. So it should return false, but I think that would be true, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense. Um, there's two ways that I can think of to do this. Um, one way, I basically have to know where I've been. So I keep track of, of where I've been and when I'm doing the backtrack, uh, I, I don't want to use something that I've already used. Um, I can do this two ways. So, so the way to do it in place, which is a, a memory like optimization is to kind of mutate the board as I'm going through. Um, and I would only mutate it, you know, so far as a search is going on. Um, that would be like stack space. So, uh, by doing it recursively, I'm using a lot of stack space anyway. Um, so I don't think that that's, uh, you know, like that's the memory efficient quote unquote way to do it. Um, another way I can do it is, is to kind of like make a copy of the grid, um, which, you know, has like zeros or ones for each cell. Like have I, have I, have I used that cell? If not, then, you know, continue, uh, you know, I can use it if, if I have used it, um, then, you know, then that's a, a false return basically. So, so I could do it those two ways. Um, I, I want to do it if, if it's okay with you, um, the mutating in place, because I feel like that's, um, doesn't seem too hard to add to this function. Um, and I think it would be better just to save some memory in that case, since I'm already, I'm already, already am using stack space. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me just kind of wrap my head around where that needs to be. So um, by mutating in place, I need to also designate a character that's not going to be in this, you know, solution space or in this uh, problem space. So um, can I assume that, you know, a, a letter or a word, a letter that I'll never encounter would be like, for example, like the exclamation point or something. Can I, can I use that as like a tell all, like that's never going to be a real valid. Exclamation mark works. Exclamation okay. mark works. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll designate that as a character. Um, that I'll mutate, and then here it has to be somewhere in this, you know, in this place uh, that I that I need to make my in, in the, the business logic. Um, basically, like if that if this if this check works, then I, I basically need to keep track of the character that I'm swapping for. And also like check here. So what I'm thinking of doing is like, if the board IJ is equal to word at the index, that takes care of the case because I can assume that this will never work when, you know, like this, this will never happen, right? Like exclamation point will never equal exclamation point. Do you know what I mean? Like if board IJ happens to be exclamation point that we've already used it, then this will never happen because word of index can never be exclamation point since that I'm assuming that. So that, that works. What I need to do here is somehow like save, uh, what, what I'm thinking of is like, for example, let's, let's say we get to ABC, right? And we run into B, then all of the previous things that have been made exclamation points um, need to go back to their original characters since that search failed. You know what I mean? So that previous yeah. character needs to be brought back since I'm mutating it to be like momentarily um, for this, for this, um, uh, this added thing. Uh, so I need to save some kind of like char at uh, variable. Yeah. So basically I want to say, I want to say I need to pass that along. Um, so like in the, in any case that the, I would, I would just have to do it here. So here, uh, before returning false, like in, in any case that these don't work, I just need to do like board of I J, uh, reset that back to char at and char at would need to be the previous char at is the variable that I'm assigning, assigning the previous character value. Um, so here, I think I need to pass that down. Um, oh, 
crap. And then I would need to, you know, edit the entire function um, or each of the function calls, which is a little bit tedious, but, but I, I think that's promising. Um, and I'm actually board IJ equals word zero. Yes. Um, here, I guess I would do, I would need to do like um, board of I J is equal to this, uh, this, you know, dummy variable um, so that I'm mutating it once I've actually used it because that's what this means. Like I'm using that, that character. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So I'm using it there and then I'll keep going, return a word finder for each direction. Um, and in, in any case that that doesn't work, I think I'm going to need to have to go back and change it again. Um, but this is kind of, um, I don't think this is what I want to be doing because this char at would have to be changed every time. Um, so th this would, you know, make that work, but I do, I think I do need, I'm missing something to actually switch it back. So, um, let me, let me think about how I can go, go about doing this. Um, I think I can just, uh, like before returning false at the very end, when that search failed, um, I need to reassign that to the previous character. Mm, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess I can just do um, I of J is equal to char at, right? So, so let me, let me talk to you through Yeah. So, so if, if, if first and foremost, like these two have to be there first, um, otherwise I'm just going to make a copy of it. Um, if it happens that, you know, we get in here, then, um, then we're going to mutate it. And then once these, once these recursive calls return, um, you know, ideally we return true and it doesn't really matter of restoring it to the same place. If they return, um, then we're going to, you know, end up, getting to this case, um, if it hap so happens that it's not use it used. Um, I think I'm gonna try this and see if that ends up working. Um, but um, do you see any anything I can uh, like fix right now, I guess? I think what immediately comes to mind is, do you need to pass the chart along? Could you? Oh, right, just... yeah, I don't need this now. Yeah. So if you're doing that, would you save it as like yeah, a local would, variable? Yeah, it would be this uh, backwards, basically, board of IJ. Yeah. And so, uh, this is a, a local variable here. Uh, I don't think it's a it's a, a Python term, so yeah. I guess the compiler got confused. I'll just call it char. That's fine. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try writing this, which I think should That's solve the problem. Me. Nice. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that that returned false. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Let's rerun the other test cases to make sure it hasn't broken the other ones. Okay. Um, I'll just do this. Um, um Yeah, I'll just 
do that, I guess. I was going to do uh, a list comprehension, but I don't want to. I see that I'm running out of time, so I'll just uh, I'll just run that. Make sure. Very fancy, but okay. Yeah. So uh, AVC uh, false. Oh, interesting. So one of them is not working. So ABCCED. ABCCED is not working. Interesting. Okay. So I'm guessing this is the problem. Um, this mutation is a problem. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm missing uh, this this place. Do you see any any place where I can maybe put this in a different um, area? I think it's because I'm, I'm returning straight away, so I don't even have a chance to rewrite um, to rewrite uh, the the uh, the mutated portion. Mm -hmm. Hmm, okay. You it wouldn't be clean, but you could replace it after each time it's false. Uh, do you mean like here? Uh, sorry. I mean, like over here. Like if this ends up being false, you could replace or reinstate this, um, but it's not super clean. Uh, and, and I guess that wouldn't be a, a you know recursive. Uh, I guess it still would be. Yeah, mm, I'm not sure where that would fit in, but I do know that's that's the problem. I'm looking at the time right now, um, and if you want to spend the next two minutes on this, we can. But then after that, I'd like to move on and talk a little bit about runtime, um, okay. and then save you five minutes to ask me questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we maybe talk about runtime first, and then and then um, I'll see. I'll take another crack at this. Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. So, um, I guess, yeah. What do you see the runtime the space complexity being? Um, I think for for runtime, its worst case would be uh, the size of this grid, because at the very worst case, we're gonna this loop is what's gonna dominate all of it. Um, so that would be. Uh, n squared, where the n is the, the length of, um, I guess, n times m, since this is not a, a square grid, um, n times m. Uh, and then we also need to, to check, you know, for each of these, uh, we also do, um, at most, you know, a search of the length of the word. So that's another factor. Um, so I think it'd be like a, a multiplication of those three. So the length of the word times the rows times the columns, basically. Hello? 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 Are you still, are you still there? Hello? Hello. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Continue. Um, yeah. What, what I was saying is it, it would be a, a multiplication of the rows times the columns times the, the length of the word. Uh, that would be the, the, run, the worst case run time. Awesome. OK. For space? Oh, uh, space would be, um, you know, since it's a recursive, it would be stack space, I guess. Um, and at the, at the very worst, like we would have to keep track of uh, a path throughout. Um, so like worst case, worst case, each of them is, is kind of um, promising. So I guess like, it sounds like it would be the same. Um, like we would need to go through and potentially build a path for each of the candidates. Um, so I would, I would say, yeah, it would be the same for, for space. Do we have to factor in the size of the word at all? Yeah, that's, that's where that would go, is, is uh, multiplication of the rows times the columns times the length of the word, which is the, the last term. 
Yes. Amazing. Okay. Did you want to take another crack at it? Um, yeah. Uh, I think given the disconnect, I think we should just kind of move that on. And, and uh, I do want to ask you some questions. So. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Sweet. So this is where you can like ask questions um, about, you know, anything that you might want. To, uh, I would use this time to ask about personally for the interviewer, what they think about the company, um, since any other information you can just get from your recruiter. Um, I think this is a good way to gauge if this is somewhere you actually want to you know, work. And then also just, you know, gauge what the person is like. So that's a good, you know, explanation or a good case of who you'd be working with. Um, and yeah, this is where you have like five minutes. Hopefully you, you have enough time to answer your questions. Um, and that's kind of what the interview would be like. Yeah. Um, the interviewer will close off with saying like when you should expect to hear back and what kind of, what next steps would look like. Um, that. Sweet. Hope this helps. Yeah. Good luck, y'all. Crush your technical interviews. <laughs> okay, we leave now. Bye.